Namaste. My name is Saurabh Nanda. I'm a career consultant from India, and I've been doing this for the last 10 years now. When I was in middle school, everyone around me, my parents, my teachers, they told me, study hard, work hard, because if you do that, then your life will be set. Then you don't have to do anything else. Everything will happen on its own. I didn't really understand that. Then they told me again, if you study hard, you will have more playtime. That I understood, because all my life, what I wanted to do in school time was increase my playtime. When I reached grade 10, everyone told me that if you study hard in grade 10, if you do it well, then your life is set. You don't have to do anything after that. And that's what I did. And I thought, that was a good deal, because grade 10 in India is a very big career milestone. Once you finish grade 10, then you, uh, based on a national level exam, your academic scores allow you to choose subjects. You can choose science, you can choose commerce, where you study business and economics, or you can choose hum humanities, where you study geography and uh, political science, psychology, and so on. I did that and I felt really relieved after finishing grade 10. Not because it was a great milestone that I achieved, but because now I didn't need to do anything. Now everything will happen on its own, but that was not the case. I had to choose the subjects. I wanted to study geography, history, biology, and maths, but my school did not allow that. So then I grew impatient, and I took physics, chemistry, biology, and maths. And I studied that for one year. I enjoyed the complex syllabus. I enjoyed the new concepts. But after one year, I realized that I had no playtime left. And by that time, I had become smarter. I had understood how to make career decisions. I had understood that in India, if you take biology, then you can become a doctor. But I didn't like the smell of hospitals. So I dropped biology. And in all my logical understanding, that was the best decision I could make. And I started studying for engineering now. Grade 12 is another big milestone, and everyone told me that if you finish grade 12 very well, you will end up in a good engineering institute, and then your life will be set. You don't have to do anything. So I finished grade 12, and then I realized that was not the case. I still had to make more decisions. I had to choose from engineering universities spread all across India in cities I had never heard of. And on top of that, I had to choose an engineering discipline out of some 40-odd options. I had no idea what an engineer does. So I asked my parents, who, like me, had no idea what an engineer does. So they asked all our relatives, all their friends, and one of my uncles, he's a physics professor in a college. He said, you know what? You should go for computer science. Because if you become a software engineer, your life will be set. <laughs> hmm. One and a half years into engineering, I realized I should have taken chemical engineering. Two years into engineering, I realized I should have taken humanities after grade 10. I worked for an American software company for two and a half years. Till the time I realized I couldn't do it anymore. Engineering is not something that I truly enjoy on a weekly basis, so I quit. It took me seven years of engineering, studies and job to realize engineering is not for me. And probably now you might relate to a cliche about Indians, <laughs> if you've met a lot of Indians abroad, they are software engineers. Now you know why they are software engineers, because somebody's uncle had made that decision for them. And also another cliche that Indians first do engineering and then decide what to do with their lives. I was at a crossroads in my life. I had left my job. I didn't know what should I do with this. But my friends were surprisingly very supportive and very helpful. They said, don't worry, it's OK. This happens. Now what you need to do is study for an MBA. Because once you get an MBA, then your life is set. 
This story is not unique to me. This is the story of millions of students and young professionals in India. And for the last five odd years, I worked globally, and I've realized this story is not unique to India. This story is the story of millions of people across the world. I had done everything that everyone asked me to do, but still I ended up in a confused state. I was still not sure what to do with my life. So I embarked on a journey to find out how we make career decisions. After working with a lot of psychologists, counselors, schools, universities, psychometricians, corporate trainers, edtech companies, what we've realized is that we make career decisions based on some influences. These career decision influences can be categorized in majority in primarily these four areas. The first one is comparison. Humans are naturally wired to compare our situation with another's. When we do that comparison, we learn from that analysis. We can get motivated, we can get discouraged, we can get inspired. Some of us love to compare. Some of us hate doing it. But either which way, somebody, maybe your friend, your family, will do it for you. You might have experienced something like this. Look at him. Look at what she is doing. Why can't you do something like that? The next influencer is herd mentality. Humans just feel secure in numbers, don't we? Plus, it helps us in not making a decision because there is just so much overwhelming information available today, so many options. It also helps us in maintaining friendships and relationships because most of the times we do what our friends are doing. The next influencer is the major one called expectations. Now, with this constant comparison with others, we start making a success model in our minds. And then we start doing things which we might not want to do, but we have to do in order to achieve success. There are expectations from people around us, people in our lives, our friends, family. But more intensely, there are expectations of ourselves we build huge expectations of ourselves. And finally, there are some other societal factors also which contribute in constant confusion. Social media, constant information <laughs> flow from our friends and family, oh, try this, try that, forces us to revisit all our decisions again and again. Now, these influencers were supposed to help us, were supposed to help us in making a good decision but they end up creating stress for us. They end up making us paralyzed for making a good career decision. And that paralysis actually increases the pressure for making good decisions. Now, I understood after conducting hundreds of workshops and counseling sessions across hundreds of schools and universities, spread over numerous cities in India and abroad, impacting thousands of students and young professionals, that career is not a destination. Career is a journey. A high school student might have to choose subjects after grade 10. He might have to look at the right university program. He might have to work towards getting into that university program. Once in university, that university student has to think about the internships, the majors that he wants to do. He or she might have to find the right job opportunities. They might have to understand whether I should go for entrepreneurship or not. If you're a young professional, you might be thinking about all these things, including higher education, whether it's uh, the right time to grow for entrepreneurship or not, on top of trying to understand how to grow in the organization that I'm working in right now. What kind of skills and education do I need in order to do that? Experienced professionals might be going through a career transition. They might want to take career breaks. They might be thinking of generating a secondary source of income. They might be seriously considering entrepreneurship. We make career decisions throughout our life. It's a journey. And we can find how to make those decisions in a better manner. Now, there are spheres of understanding, as I like to call them, which help us in making these career decisions. 
the first sphere of understanding is external knowledge, managing external knowledge. In today's world especially, we are constantly uh, given a lot of information from the internet or from friends and family, and we have to understand which one works for us or not. But we are not able to do that. It's the easiest sphere to understand or identify. We look at something and we think, should I do this or not? But most of this information is misleading and misinterpreted. And it helps us less and harms us more. Without context, this is not helpful. The context is provided by the second sphere of understanding, which is understanding or knowing yourself. When I talk about knowing yourself, in fact, in our company, we call this step zero. For example, if somebody wants to be a lawyer, there are so many people out there who will tell you, you know, in order to become a lawyer, this is step one, step two, step three. If you want to create content, step one, step two, step three. But nobody will actually be able to tell you very accurately whether this is something that you should do, whether this is a good fit for you, whether you can do it for a long time or not. And that is why knowing yourself is the most important part. It is very accurately possible today to know yourself through psychometric assessments and detailed counseling. Knowing your aptitudes, your natural talents, your personality, which is a manifestation of your aptitudes and the environment that you grew up in, your friends, family, etc., all contribute to that. And then understanding your interests with the help of a professional who can tell you why you do what you do. Why do you not like to do something? And so on. When we combine these two spheres of understanding, then we can reach the next sphere of understanding, which is mapping opportunities. Now I know how to manage external information, now I know myself, and now I understand whether this fits for me or not. Once I understand that, then I can look at timelines, I can plan my career, I can think about all the education and skills that I need in order to get success in this particular opportunity or career option. And we have to repeat this process again and again. Because external information will keep on adding, because more and more information keeps on generating in the world. And we also evolve, we grow. So our self, we increase or we, we change. And then we have to do the mapping again, whether it works for me or not. And once you continuously do that, in fact, most people, they only look at external opportunities or external knowledge, and they think that I can map the opportunities just by understanding what is out there. They don't focus on knowing themselves. That is why we call it step zero or the most important part. And if you do this process again and again, then you will reach a very deep understanding. A deep understanding which can help you in taking advanced career decisions. Advanced career decisions such as creating your own opportunities. Mentorship, entrepreneurship, taking strategic, innovative decisions. Opening your own organization. All these advanced career decisions can only be done if you have mastered these three spheres of understanding. Now, what is happening in the world today? Let's try and understand that a little bit. We've all had the opportunity to observe how the world has been changing. And especially in the last few years, we've seen that change a lot. When the world changes, so do careers. In fact, today, we can use a military acronym called VUCA to explain the career world. VUCA is volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. Imagine your career or your workplace like a war zone where anything can happen at any time without notice. It's very difficult to understand. It's very difficult to solve. And isn't that exactly what's happening with the pandemic and the recession and the layoffs? So your life or your child's life might not be set right now. This VUCA is driven by automation and digitization of agriculture, industry, services. Digitization is happening everywhere. It has been accelerated with the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's happening unevenly across countries, companies, and organizations. And then finally, people who are giving the jobs, the employers, their demands have changed. They want you to have experience even if you're a student. They want you to be having an expertise in a particular area, but at the same time, know more about other domains as well. In fact, most of the students today, they are studying or preparing for things or jobs which do not exist right now. They might be visible five years down the line. Then on the other hand, 
the demands of the workers are changing as well. We live in a world of instant gratification. Now people do not want to stay in a particular job or career track for long years before they taste any success. They want the success right now. In fact, it is said uh, that Gen Z, they will not only change many jobs in their lives, they will change many careers. And that is why education, the traditional conventional education matters less and less now. So, what is the future of jobs? Which direction should we head in then? The future of jobs is primarily in three areas. The first one is obviously technology. We can use new technology or create new technology to solve bigger and more complex problems for human civilization. That's a great area to have a job in. The second area is human. If machines are going to take over all the jobs, then what are humans supposed to do? Humans are supposed to do what only humans can do, solve problems for humans. Better therapy, counseling, more customized services, better teaching, better mentorship, better coaching. These are things only humans can do. And the third area is if you can enable certain services, certain things with technology, if you can digitize, if you can make things better by using technology. That is an area where you can definitely have jobs. But how do we achieve these jobs? Yes, of course, there is the model that we talked about, how to make career decisions, which involves understanding external knowledge, understanding yourself, and then seeing whether this fits for me or not. And then you have to also develop skills of these times. Now, the skills that we need today are called 21st century skills. These skills want you or need you to have mental elasticity. Complex problem solving, critical reasoning, empathy, creativity, people skills, communication skills, resilience. Notice how none of these skills are technical in nature, because most of the technical part will be handled by technology. So you have to learn these skills. How will we do that? We will do that by learning, by doing. Human beings are experiential creatures. So take part in more projects, outreach programs, internships, apprenticeships. Create your own learning spaces. Create your own world. But keep in mind the times that we're living in. We're living in the times of overload of information and sensory overload. Human minds are not designed for it. That means we have to maintain a balance between intellectual stimulation and emotional fulfillment. Because if we do too much of one, then we'll end up in stress, either work-related stress or life-related stress. Center yourselves and reach higher levels of understanding. Only then you will be able to preserve your mental health and follow the path to your ikigai. Once you've done all this, Please, you have to share your understanding with the rest of the world because the world is becoming increasingly complex. You have to share your perspective, your opinion, your knowledge. You have to let the opportunities know that you exist. You need to know that the world will be searching for you and you should be available when the world searches for you. The future has always fascinated human beings. Where are we going? And the future has always belonged to those people who can connect the dots. And you shall be able to connect the dots also through your life's experiences. With today's talk, I've attempted to share with you a slightly better and more informed way of doing that.